So much for the economic considerations of carbon pricing. I included the paper by Maestre Andres, Drews and Van den Berg to also briefly discuss the social foundation for carbon pricing. The paper notes that while people appreciate that carbon pricing is liberty preserving, that people also express concern over the distributional aspects of carbon pricing. The paper notes that most studies about carbon pricing acceptability come from, from Europe and North America. The paper describes several cases of protests in response to proposed carbon pricing, including Yellow Fest protest in France of 2018 and reversal of carbon pricing in Australia due to public pressure in 2014. More recently, we have seen protests in Ecuador that wanted to cut fossil fuel subsidies. The protest led to a state of emergency and the reintroduction of the subsidies. Around the same time, there were also protests over cuts in fossil fuel subsidies in Iran. While prices increased steeply, they remained amongst, amongst the lowest in the world. As far as I know, Iran did not budge to protests. Rather, the protests are reported to have been squashed finally, leading to an estimated death toll exceeding a thousand people. So how come there is this gap between economists, their advocacy of carbon pricing and the hesitancy of the general public to embrace it? This gap may be explained in part by the idea of double dividend. Maestre Andres and colleagues described the double, double dividend hypothesis as double dividend refers to recycling carbon pricing revenues by reducing distortionary taxes example given labor taxes, income taxes, which may have positive impacts on economic growth, employment or technological development. In other words, the first dividend is the efficiency gain from reducing externalities with the carbon tax. This tax generates government revenues, which can be used to lower distortionary taxes on things that we think are good, such as labor, hence the double dividend. Yet, Maestro Andres and colleagues also write that people are skeptical about the idea of a double dividend of environmental tax reform because people do not trust that the government will actually do as promised. This idea of double dividend and revenue recycling we could also find in Stiglitz et al, which underlined that climate change policy and poverty reduction can be achieved simultaneously. Quoting from page 39, Data from developing countries also suggest that taking 100 US dollars away from fossil fuel subsidies and redistribute, redis, redistributing that money equally among the population would on average transfer 13 US dollars to the bottom quintile and take 23 US dollars away from the top quintile. Well, people were most concerned over distributional aspects of carbon pricing. Tax redistribution was not the most favored use of funds. Rather, most re respondents seem to favor the earmarking of funds to be used in environmental projects, despite this earmarking behavior being known to reduce the efficiency of public spending. According to Maestro Andres and colleagues, this preference for environmental earmarking is again due to a distrust in government. Some studies linked people favoring environmental earmarking with distrust in governments, as earmarking constrains policy making and thus functions as a credible commitment device. Before closing, I wanted to highlight some positive news from Glasgow. Even though not sufficiently on track, it does seem that the international meeting may have helped to push policy promises in the right direction. Let's now hope that the respective world leaders can find sufficient support for carbon reducing policies back home. It seems to me that the main challenge to carbon pricing is balancing ambition with public acceptability. In summary, both Pigouvian taxes and cap and trade introduce prices for previously unpriced externalities. And in this way, both instruments can help to address an important market failure. Although theoretically equivalent in a simplified setting, both instruments have their advantages and disadvantages. However, marginal external 
costs, such as social cost of carbon, are also notoriously difficult to estimate, for which reasons average social cost of carbon, or Paris consistent, car consistent carbon prices, could also be considered as valuable policy inputs. We have looked into the relative strengths of taxation in cap and trade with Whiteman's theorem. And finally, we have observed that trust in the government seems to be important for making carbon pricing a success. Here you can find the references that I used for today's lecture. Next week in environmental economics, we will go into the valuation of nature and ecosystem services. Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions?